Hey everybody, this is Denny. And this is James from TDB.org. And today we're talking about another raw poor tea. Indeed. So this is a, a big leaf um, poor tea. It's really interesting and actually I definitely wanted to bring it onto the show because uh, I've rarely ever seen tea with leaves this big, period. And so to see this in the poor form, it's pretty unique and cool. Yeah, it's very cool to see it open up. And this is a tea from uh, verdanttea.com. And they're really just good at bringing kind of like these really small productions of independent um, just tea farmers and people that are really not in the mainstream. So we have hot water and tea leaves, two things that are important for tea. We're going to go ahead and use about 3.2 grams of um, tea, tea leaves themselves in here. And I'm going to remove the piece of hair that's in there. Throw that into our 100 milliliter gaiwan. I'm actually not even going to fill this all the way up. Um, so we're going to fill it up to basically a, about to where it starts to curve out. And we're going to do a couple rinses, and then we'll do some short steepings as well. Yep. So um, this tea is beautiful. It's going to really evolve in the, in the way that it looks. Um, and hopefully we'll also taste some of that evolution as well. Yep. And so what are some of the advantages to using kind of a gaiwan versus um, a Ishin clay teapot for this? Because I've, I've, this is the first time we've used a gaiwan for a poor tea. So right. maybe it's good to explain some of that. Yeah, absolutely. So this is our first rinse, by the way. So um, one of the reasons that I'm doing this in this way is just for presentation and aesthetics alone. Uh, the actual tea leaves when they open up are beautiful. And it's kind of fun and interesting to see that on a white background surface, the same reason why we're using white porcelain or ceramic uh, tea cups, um, because it really enables you to, to see the tea itself better. Um, there's no reason why you can't brew in a gaiwan. Uh, it's not you know, necessarily traditional, but uh, it's gonna taste great also. So yep. might as well try it out. Um, and uh, yeah, why not? It's yep. interesting. And the gaiwan is a flavor neutral device, but the reason why I love the gaiwan so much is it's really just a, it's a smelling device. Like you can smell the lid, you can smell the tea leaves. It's just very, very accessible and it's gonna give out much more of that aroma than uh, for instance, an Ishin clay teapot. Indeed. So, we are on our second rinse here. We're just going to heat all of our stuff up one more time. And we are noticing here that the, the color is pretty uh, light. Pretty light. And I'm already getting a lot of the smell out of this tea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I can smell it from here, and I haven't even smelled the guy one. So, I noticed you've been using this kind of two-rinse style a lot. And it seems like you're really liking it. Is that true? Yeah, it's great. And so what kind of advantages does that really give? Well, you know, I, I think that the, the biggest thing is that the first two soaks to the tea, which are going to be the rinses, are not going to be able to open the, the especially poor tea up as much as you'd like. So already just pouring this through our strainer, I'm noticing the viscosity change dramatically. Yep. We're also noticing the color change and the actual volume of the tea leaves have changed dramatically. So we'll make sure to get some, some shots of this, but wow, it's, it's beautiful. Um, the tea is opening up mm. quite, quite nicely. It's got a very, very nice smell to it too. Yeah. So, mm. okay. So let's give this a try. See what All we right. think. Hmm. It's really not very bitter at all, um, unlike our dye tea, too. This yeah. is also very, very, um, it's kind of sweet, and it's kind of got that pine taste to it. Mm -hmm, definitely. That's a good observation, yeah. Something, not quite herbal, but, um, yeah, uh, rosemary, pine, really good call. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And do you know very much about like where this tea was harvested or anything like that? I don't, frankly. Yeah. Um, I should do more research on it, um, but I don't know a lot about it. This tea is going to be, of course, from Yunnan, but yep. uh, specifics besides that, I don't know. One thing about big leaf tea in general is that the tea leaves are going to be more mature than your young silver needle-like um, tea leaves. So that alone is an indication of, um, well, it's going to influence the flavor dramatically. Um, 
So this is a special brew, no doubt. Yep. And one other reason that you can kind of rinse this tea twice is it's unlike a green tea or a white tea, for instance, the longevity of poor teas and oolong teas, especially if they're good quality, is just much better. So it might feel like you're wasting tea, but you're really not if you're extending this to, like, how many brewings would you say this could go to? Ten. Yeah, easily. easily. So. Indeed. Okay. So for me, I personally um, will sometimes skip that rinse if it's a really kind of good and clean green or white tea. Um, just because like you're not going to get nearly as many steepings out of those teas. But this tea is very, very nice. It's It's got that pine taste, and I'm really curious to see how this is going to evolve. I mean, a little bit of the smokiness as well. Last episode, I think the tea that we had on, I didn't really get that smoky flavor, which was interesting for me because poor traditionally I really associate that that um, taste with so yeah. I'm getting I'm getting kind of that peaty taste but it's not tanniny it's not bitter it really isn't no yeah. it's, it's quite nice so and I wonder if this tea takes a little bit longer to open up just because the leaves leaves are kind of just larger it's definitely called big leaf so definitely and you know we're actually the interestingly the color of this is not changing dramatically it's a little bit more vibrant and saturated of a color profile from our rinses but it's still a, a nice beautiful yellow um, maybe a little hint of red in there so I'm definitely getting that um, that piney and uh, smoky uh, flavor yeah. more intensely now yeah, I, I'm definitely getting that pine flavor, um, and it's coming out stronger. Y even these leaves, when you smell them, you kind of get that smoky sensation. Hmm. Um, and I think that, I wonder where that comes from, but I've noticed it in a lot of Yunnan black teas as well, so it might be kind of true of just that province and that general. <clears throat> and as we can see, looking inside of the gaiwan, the leaves, the whole leaves themselves, are big and wide. And they look absolutely beautiful filling up the guy one. Many different colors. This looks like a sort of a haphazard, disorganized tea, but it's coming together really beautifully. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's quite nice. And so for you, would this tea kind of be an evening tea as well? Hmm, that's a good question. You know, frankly, I could see this tea ending a meal. Something like mm. having a really... Uh, fatty meal of some sort, and then a, a bold, smoky, kind of intense flavor to sort of yep. clear my palate and finish it off. Yep. So you heard it here, folks. Eat a pizza and then drink this tea. <laughs> so you can get it done. <laughs> yeah, good call. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I wish. Okay. <laughs> here we go. So, again, we're doing pretty short seep times, and this tea is, is still if not a little bit more vibrant now. Yeah. So. And so how are you uh, kind of controlling your steep times? Like, are you just doing it by feel? Kind of, is this giving out a lot? Is it giving out a little? Um, you know, by feel, for the most part, early on in this tea, since we're using so little of liquid to a high volume of tea ratio, we're going to be able to steep it short for a number of sessions, a number of brews. Um, but then it's, it will lose some of that, the viscosity, a little bit of the taste, the color yep. will lighten up a little bit, and then it's kind of up to you to experiment and see what you like. Yep. Maybe you reboil your hot water, that might work, uh, and use the same amount of time. Maybe you might soak it. Maybe you might leave, come back the next day, and just do another short brew, but because those tea leaves have been soaking a little bit, they're nice and intense again. Hmm. So, play around with it, see what you like. It's our motto here, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm, this is nice. So actually, this is... I'm getting a more sweet, fruity taste out of this now, interestingly. Um, it's well, subtle, yeah, but... It's still very piney. But yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm getting definitely some of those fruity hints, and uh, it's... Yeah, mm. it's it's evolving. It's definitely like each steep for this tea has been very very different actually. Yeah, that last one was 
Yeah. Really nice. A lot of times for teas, it'll just very subtly change, and you'll realize by the end of it, you're getting completely different flavor profiles. But each of these has been quite distinct. So I'd recommend really paying attention to the kind of the subtleties and the nuances of this tea as you go steeping to steeping. And there's a couple of great ways to do that. You can take notes on the tea. You could use services like steepster.com to record your thoughts. Um, but it's a good way to just be very active on learning about this tea and learning how you taste and uh, so you can move on to kind of the next level of tea tastings. Yeah, so if someone wants to learn more about this tea, what should they do? Yeah, they should visit um, tdb.org where we have a lot of great information about poor tea. This is going to conclude our series on poor tea, and I don't think we've talked about what we're doing next, but a ton of great information there on the history of the tea, how to brew it, um, and that sort of thing. You can also buy this tea on verdanttea.com. Um, fantastic tea company. Um, yeah. Perfect. So that concludes our final episode of our Poo Earth series. We'll do another one, I'm sure, soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we will check you guys back next week. Thanks for watching, guys. See you.